Hello and welcome back to our series on mathematical proofs. Today we're going to be looking at proof using an arbitrary element. So to get some intuition for how this proof for how this proof technique is used and why it is important, I've chosen a uh, a fairly straightforward example that I think is pretty intuitive, right? So here uh I've defined set A to be the set of all multiples of 3, and set B to be the set of all multiples of 6. Okay, and then my claim is, if that's how those are defined, then B will be a subset of A. Now, uh, probably you can realize that intuitively, right? That um, if a... If a uh, if a number is a multiple of 6, it must also be a multiple of 3, right? Um, or, you know, maybe you could jot down some elements from each one, right? We could say, you know, set A might look something like this. You know, and it just goes on forever in both directions, right? B would be something similar. Oops, zero, six, 12, right? Okay, and then, oh, well, look, everything we wrote down in six, or sorry, everything we wrote down in B is also in A, right? Now, this is not a proof, right? This because all I've done here is I've shown, well, these specific numbers that I wrote down in here are also in here, but that doesn't necessarily mean that all of them are, right? Because after all, there are an infinite number of numbers in each of these sets, so you could never uh, test all of them, right? Um, like I said, you could probably see intuitively why this must be true, but that's not quite the same thing as a rigorous proof either. So let's, let's look at how you can use an arbitrary element to prove that this is indeed the case. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by just letting uh, lowercase b be an element of b. Okay, so just suppose that b is some element of this set big b right um i'm i'm it's just some arbitrary non-specified element right okay then by definition of the way i defined set b this this uh, this element of b can be written as 6 times some integer m, right? Uh, where m is an element of the integers, right? Okay, so this little set b can be written as 6 times an integer, right? That's what it means to be a multiple of six. Okay. Uh, then we could also write b as three times two times m. Okay. Nothing really revolutionary here. Just more algebra. Uh, and since two m is also going to be an integer, that means b is a multiple of 3. Okay, so uh, where 2m is an integer, right? Therefore, by definition, b is a multiple of 3, right? And so B must be an element of this set A, right? The set of all elements, um, or sorry, set of all multiples of three. We've, we showed that B must be 
a multiple of 3, so it must be in set A. Okay, now, I'm, I'm essentially pretty much done at this point, right? Because what I did, it, since, since this lowercase b is just some generic, uh, generic element of b, right? It's not a specific one. I didn't pick, I didn't pick an element of b like 6 or 12 or 72 or something like that, right? It's this generic b could represent any element in set b, right? So since, since this little lowercase b is arbitrary, any element in set b has to be an element in set a, right? So, um, since b is arbitrary, any element of b is in a. So, therefore, by definition, B is a subset of A, right? So all we did here is we sort of took uh, your intuitive understanding of why this must be true, right? This idea that uh, any, any set, or sorry, any, any element in B must be a multiple of six and every, uh, every multiple of six is a multiple of three. So therefore anything in B must be an A, right? That's essentially just what I did here, right? That's, that's a simple, a simple uh, use of an arbitrary element, right? Now, this technique is used all the time in mathematics. You can use it in much more complicated proofs. Uh, we'll take uh, a look at that in the future. Um, but for now, uh, this proof is concluded.